All right, all right. <laughs> hey, Jordan, how's it going, buddy? Hey, man, doing great. How's it going, John? I, I love that little uh, clip from the International Cargo Bike uh, Festival. It brings back some memories. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, welcome back. We're uh, we're on to uh, actually hitting day one and day two. So we uh, you know flew into Amsterdam and got off the plane and uh, you know collected our luggage. Uh, I think the very first thing that we did was got caffeine. We got coffee on us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, yeah. We did what's uh, important first. It, it was. It was. It, how was your flight, man? What was that like? Yeah, this is your first time flying into Amsterdam, right? Yeah, it was pretty seamless. Um, thankfully, no drama. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, but I was ready for that coffee. We, we, we saved the drama for later, and we'll, ad- we'll address some <laughs> okay. of that transportation and transit drama in just a little bit. But, uh, hey, why don't we do this? Let's kick this off with a, a little bit of a slideshow, some still photography that we shot right. while trying to make our way over to uh, Expo Greater Amsterdam, which is where the International Cargo Bike Festival was being held, which is actually right between uh, Harlem and the Schiphol Airport. So it was actually very, very close, relatively speaking, uh, to the airport. And when we looked at the options of trying to get from Schiphol with our bikes, with our luggage, uh, it, it became obvious that it was actually very feasible and actually more practical for us to just try to ride our bikes immediately from the airport. And so that's exactly what we have here. And, uh, and so, yeah, there you are <laughs> smiling. You got your yeah, bike. Yeah. This was, yeah. Right after we did our, our setup, pulled our bikes out of those bag, the big bag on the back. That's what we took our bikes in. Yeah. Uh, unfolded them outside. Cause it was nice. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, here, uh, and here's a, here's a shot of us literally, um, you know, right outside of the terminal area on some of the streets right there at the airport. How cool was that being able to just ride away from the airport? Honestly, kind of surreal. Like the concept should be obvious, right? And doable anywhere. It's, it's natural and it makes so much sense. Um, but, and we saw so many people doing it clearly because it's, it's easy enough for the people who live there, but it was wild. Like I, yeah. I could hardly believe we were doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And of course this shot doesn't <laughs> exemplify the fact that we saw lots of people riding. Um, and we right. did not shoot video because we felt so pressured to get to the international cargo bike festival, which had, which had actually started earlier in the morning. This is at about 1130 in the morning. And so we were uh, felt kind of pressured to try to just get there because <laughs> we had already missed yeah. a, a quite a bit of the content. So, well, let's uh, let's hit play again and uh, go through some of the other things. You know what? I was amazed. We had a little bit of of you know stuff that was urban, but then we were able to get onto these paths and uh, oh, yeah. being able to go through these parks. <laughs> Remember all this? Yep. Yep. No, and, this was like, you, you got away from that. There was a little bit of industrial area that we rode through, and obviously you're missing that and some construction that you're missing. Yeah. But then kind of getting to this part where you felt like you were like in the countryside, sort of in one of these big parks, uh, that was that was great. And then, of course, we yeah. discovered the, the like convention place this was happening at. Yeah. yeah. Which was also sort of in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I, 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 I kicking myself that I didn't plan better. I had my phone. The iPhone is what I usually snap photos when I'm writing, uh, and I was rookie navigating mistake. with that. I know, rookie mistake. I was navigating, so I, I probably should have planned <laughs> on having uh, another camera available to be able to, to to capture some of that. And and for instance, like we were, you know, kind of going through this little section. Um, right over here we're going through this area and we like literally go around the corner and then oh there's the there's the building there's the expo so it was literally you know n- next to a whole bunch of uh, really cool park areas but then we we get to the expo and and we you know get our, our luggage sorted away and they gave us a nice little corner to be able to uh, kind of stow our bikes and then boom we were, we're in it we dove right in yeah, I, I want to point out, I think we probably showed up on the smallest cargo bikes. Ah, yeah, there's a photo of that. Just yeah. wait. <laughs> and uh, and there you are. In, in fact, um, 
you're you're posing in front of uh, the, the Dutch World bikes there, and yeah. there's me yeah. at the turn. I had to get a a little turn thing, but I I, I did want to uh, pause on on this particular uh, uh, display which you were standing in front of too. Is yes, this was the International Cargo Bike Festival, but there was also a lot of uh, the booths there that were really looking at the electrification, and so some of the bikes that you do see here are e-bikes, and this is actually a really cool little concept where they took some of uh, Dutch old world style bikes and then they have a, a hub that is electrified. So that's what this particular display is all about. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the styling. It's just beautiful bikes. Me too. It's good stuff. And then we hone in. That's that's the actual um, mechanism that, that we have in there. And and then we have these guys. Look at this. <laughs> it's a boat. It's a boat bike. A bike boat. Yeah. <laughs> a bike. Yeah. Bike boat. Boat bike. Yeah. It was good stuff, and we and we did get to see. And this was actually somebody from Montana. So there you go, Coaster mm-hmm. Cycles out of um, I think it was Missoula, Montana. And then we've got, uh, of course, the Urban Arrows. Now we'll see that bike again. Don't worry, that's a that's a special bike. But yeah, there there you are. That's exactly what you bikes. were talking about. Is uh, this photo was actually taken by Jos uh, Sloishmans, the uh, uh, director of the International Cargo Bike Festival, and. Uh, he was so tickled to see us, you know, a ride in with our cargo bikes, and uh, and he definitely wanted to, the walk. to get that. And so he posted this out on Twitter uh, almost immediately. Yeah. So, yeah, it was good. We stuff. really looked so, out with the weather. Like that would not have been nearly as much fun with a typical like rainy, <laughs> yeah, rainy day in Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah. No, you you are absolutely right, and. Uh, what what was that like? I mean, this was your first major trip, uh, you know, doing the whole Brompton and luggage combination, you know, directly from the airport and all that. What what was what was that experience like for you? Well, I won't lie, it was intimidating for me, but it was it felt a lot easier the fact that like I knew I was going with you and you'd done this before, and I feel like things took me twice as long as they did you. But I mean, honestly, the place is pretty well set up for it. You know, the airport is pretty well set up for rearranging your stuff. It just make sure you got good straps, uh, long enough straps that can hold stuff down. And uh, that seemed to be pretty important on this day. And those little Bromptons can carry a lot of, like a lot of weight. So it doesn't look like it at first, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. How was it your first time? What was your first time like? Oh, gosh, I, it was so long ago. I don't even remember. <laughs> I mean, I've been doing this for over a decade of of uh, yeah. of these things. So, um, yeah, it, it, you're right. I mean, th- these little Bromptons are you know real workhorses when it comes to this type of uh, you know cargo carrying capacity and all that. Although I will say, you know, it, we've ended up seeing it uh, later uh, in a couple days later my bike started squeaking really badly well it turned out i needed to replace a very very yeah. important pivot bolt in the frame itself and so basically my bike you know after 10 plus years of using it was was falling apart so it was a good thing that i got that fixed the bike was doing its best to be a part of the video like oh yeah, audio totally. wise yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Somebody, somebody uh, mentioned in, in my uh, profile video uh, from the 29th that they, they said something along the lines, do you have a flock of parakeets with you? <laughs> it was squeak, 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 oh, squeak, yes. squeak. <laughs> so anyways, after this photo, we, uh, we roll out back into the, the, the park area and then we take a little bit more, uh, get a little bit more intentional about shooting some, some photography. Thank you very much for snapping these. And, uh, and this, this is cool. So this is a nice little video. Uh, so set us up. What are we, what are we seeing here? Yeah, well, I mean, we're in one of the smaller towns outside Amsterdam. And I was just kind of interested in seeing how they do the treatment at an intersection like this with a, you know, fairly busy road. Um, you know, comfortable enough tunnel. But of course, on the other end, that's where the magic really happens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's not often that you get to run into a guy with a pet sheep. <laughs> yeah, multiple sheep. <laughs> we ran into a lot of like animals on these paths. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm joking. This guy was of unfazed. Course. I'm joking, of course. This is not the guy's pet sheep. But the sheep is very curious about him because he's pulled over looking at his phone and that sheep is just going right up and saying, hey, do, do you have anything for me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That but guy yeah, was not right. totally yeah, unfazed you, by it. Yeah, you see the whole flock right here, too. So th that's great. But yeah, so this is um, uh, kind of just on the outskirts of Harlem is is where this is. And yeah. uh, it was it was wonderful for us to be able to see that. And I snapped this shot because this is a side by side uh, tandem trike. And then here we are making our way back to Schiphol because that's mm -hmm. where we needed to catch this train. And uh, yeah. And that wait a minute. So we, we can't just skip over that. That's important right there, that train. Um, so, yeah, so that was our first, Yeah, you know, that was our first train ride with the bikes, with the luggage and all of that. And, and, and for folks who might be like really super familiar with the train system there, there was a reason we went back to Schiphol because there were, it was an entire line of tracks that were under repair. Why don't you kind of explain that because it kind of sets us up for the next day and the drama that unfolds the next day. But so on this very first day, we felt compelled to get to Delft early to get back simply because we were we wanted to get back in daylight so we can get checked into yeah. our respective uh, apartments and Airbnbs. And uh, so, yeah, so take it away. Why are we back at Schiphol and on the train there? <laughs> Well, I guess all I remember was that they had been doing some construction on the line that would have taken us more directly, which probably would have saved us quite a lot of time. Um, but that was really only the start of our kind of train drama for a couple of days. And it was already like an hour ride back to the train state, you know, the Schiphol train station anyway, yeah. plus another hour with transfers. I don't know what your expectations were with the train the first time. But other than, you know, a little bit of that drama, I was a little bit surprised that, um, and maybe it was more clear dragging the, you know, rolling the Brompton around, but how, you know, not particularly accessible these places, like these trains were, like if you're in a wheelchair, for example, I didn't see any, on most of these trains, I didn't see any access. And I think you said that some of them you have to request in advance, like a... Yeah. Wheelchair accessible. Is that right? Or am I misremembering that? No, you're kind of remembering. And that actually popped up on Twitter not too terribly long ago uh, of somebody who, you know, is in a wheelchair, was visiting the Amsterdam area. And she was like chronicalizing and, and, yeah. and really talking about all the challenges that exist with the buses, the, with the, 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 the trains and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you, you, you notice that we notice that with the Bromptons because we would be like, okay, cool. We can roll it right on. And it's like, oh no, you literally have to reach down, pick it up and go. And then you're like, oh, if I were in a wheelchair, how would I even yeah. get on this? So, yeah. No. Yeah. I was a little bit, um, I was a little shocked by that, to be honest. Yeah. Um, some of the newer trains are, have gotten better about that yeah. clearly. Yeah. We saw some of the, the newer ones, the sprinters, especially the newer yeah. sprinters, we could like roll right on. And then you're like, okay, yeah. You could totally see the person in a wheelchair could roll right on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay, let's hit play again because then after a little bit of drama, we get to our destination. This is your very first time arriving in Delft. It, yeah? it was magical, right? Like it was so quiet, just like they say, you know, you could hear birds when you get out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, describe what you were feeling when you, you're like, okay, you know, here we are. Well, it was calm and it was beautiful out and it felt like, all right, this is like the kind of place I could get used to coming back to at the end of, you know, any given long day out exploring. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we happen to be kind of hanging over a railing right outside of the main central station there. And that's a busy cycle path that's right there. So like literally in that little minute or two, your very first minutes of being in Delft, there's just like bikes going like back and mm -hmm. forth like there. You're, I, I could see on your face, I mean, look at it. You know, you're just yeah. like beaming <laughs> about yeah. where am I? I'm here. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was so it's so comfortable, right? Like it's a busy street, and this is the version of a busy street outside of a uh, outside of a train station. I could really get used to that kind of a yeah. busy street. Yeah. So we scurried off from here and got to our respective uh, places. I think I rode with you over to to yours, and then I doubled back and got uh, checked into my apartment. And then we met up later that evening uh, for um, a, a wonderful dinner. Sat outside, if I remember correctly, at that that first place. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately, we don't have any photography or video from any of that. We were that tired, folks. Yeah. It was it was pretty crazy, uh, but. <laughs> Uh, we, you know, we recovered and was, we were ready for the next day and, uh, and, and really to, to do it all over again. So day two, uh, this is October 28th. And, uh, and of course we both, uh, had breakfast, uh, separately. I was over at the coffee company. Uh, which is one of my favorite hangouts right there in the uh, on the edge of the downtown Old Town area, the historic di- district of Delft. And uh, and you had a pretty sweet situation with a, a breakfast in the morning. I did. Yeah, I stayed at a bed and breakfast and that's what that's the way to do it. <laughs> and uh, and so I was just kind of grabbing some coffee. You had a couple of other errands that you were going to try to run and do. Uh, and then so I'm just like literally with my iPhone just standing out in front of coffee company shooting these uh these shots here the still photography and also uh a, a little bit of video and i'm i'm serious literally i just shot this in like a 10 to 15 minute period as as i was waiting for you to roll up uh yeah. which you end up doing in in just at the end of one of these clips but you you said something to me when you rolled up and it was like the very first thing that you said. You were just beaming. What did you say when you? Rolled I probably up? said something like, "Those are the seven, you know, five five best minutes of my life, or whatever." <laughs> so why would you say that? What, what, what was what's so special about this? Come on, Jordan. Being a little hyperbolic, but I, you know, there's something magical about obviously like a nice, sunny, crisp fall day anywhere. But, you know, I, I commute by bike to work in Dallas and, um, I enjoy that, but there's something different about kind of doing that where you're sort of in the default mode. And, and I was sort of in this sea of a bunch of other people riding cause we had to stop for the drawbridge to go up and back down and, you know, being in like this Peloton of a bunch of riders that were all kind of like comfortable around each other, um, comfortable enough riding to get close and, you know, but give each other space when, you know, one person needs to move over and turn. Like it was just kind of, you know, it was my first real experience of that in the Netherlands. And obviously we had plenty more, uh, of it in, you know, the next two weeks, but that's kind of, that's kind of what I was feeling that morning. What's, what's amazing too, uh, for me is, that route that you took, you actually didn't ride on any specific separated yeah. protected bikeways. It was all shared space. It yep. was all feet struts the whole way. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And yeah. I mean, you know, like there were times you interact with cars and times you interact with people on foot. But yeah, I guess it didn't really occur to me that none of it was like specifically bike infrastructure, but the whole thing felt about as comfortable as can be. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I try to emphasize when when talking about and trying to inspire people to imagine North America uh, being able to create a more walkable, bikeable place is just that, is it's not all yeah. separated and protected infrastructure a good portion of this is traffic calming and yeah. so decreasing the speed of the motor vehicles and then also decreasing the volume of the motor vehicles and the, it kind of works hand in hand because if you are creating a space like this space right here where it's people first it's people priority yeah. uh, then you're able to reinforce that with design the design of the street so that motor vehicle drivers are proceeding with caution and care 
And, uh, and, and then it's a self-fulfilling prophecy of then more people will, in fact, walk and bike. Uh, and, and it just, it's a, it's a beautiful, positive flywheel of success. Yeah. Um, I, and I know, uh, car ownership is still pretty high in the Netherlands. Um, I was having a conversation, might've been that morning or one of these mornings with the, my bed and breakfast host. And she's got, she's got a car and she's got two bikes, one for errands and one for like visiting friends. And she's like, yeah, even when I go to the grocery store, it's just, I just prefer to take my bike. It's easier like the whole, like everything about it is just more convenient. And very few people probably would say that. I wouldn't say that in Dallas for very many places, right? So yeah, it's just about kind of like, what what do we want to choose to make more convenient um, or more inviting? Yeah, yeah, good stuff. All right. A little bit more zen here. <laughs> and and it really is, it, it's such an inviting environment and relaxing environment. And that image right there is, in fact, the coffee company um, uh, where I had coffee and breakfast, that thing. But then we rolled on up to uh, the Del Central Station, and then we get to this. So this is like one of the only photos that we have from what ended up being a rather interesting morning. What happened, Jordan? Uh, well, we had some delays with our train and we thought we wouldn't get where we were trying to go. Yeah, so it was more there than was just a... the track. It was more than just that one line yeah. being worked on that we couldn't go that direction. We actually discovered after we showed up to the, the, the station that there was a rather tragic incident that happened yeah. and we ended up going on a, on a wild hair, hair journey. Where, where did we end up going? Where did, I mean, it was, we, we ended up <laughs> all the way through Utrecht and yes. Amsterdam and on to Harlem where we got off and just said, all right, this seems good. We'll, we'll take it from here. <laughs> and we had one of the most beautiful rides that we really had the whole trip. So it kind of, you know, yeah. this part turned out nice. Yeah, this part turned out nice. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, that's exactly what, what what ended up happening is we thought we were just doing our normal, in, in air quotes, uh, alternate route, which was to go, you know, from uh, from Delft to Rotterdam, Rotterdam to uh, uh, to to Schiphol because of the, the tracks being worked on in between Leiden and, and Harlem. Harlem. I can't ever get the pronunciation right. Uh, but... <laughs> The uh, <laughs> we ended up having to get diverted all the way down to to uh, to Utrecht and then from Utrecht all the way over. It literally took us three and a half hours just to get to the yes, event. And so for the second day in a row, we end up showing up at the International Cargo Bike Festival, uh, you know, late and. I don't know about you, but I was whooped. I was just, it was, you know, the jet lag, the fatigue, the drama of trying to get to that location. Um, I don't know. But what, what was it like for you? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, no additional comment needed. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so anyways, you're right. This this was a uh, th this was one of the stations that we got off on and we figured hey let's get off here we've got our transportation let's get on our bikes and we were able to see from the map that we could jump on a little pathway next to a canal and that's exactly what we did was we got off and we rode on this delightful little uh, canal area here it took us right to the to to the location the expo uh, location and uh, boom we're, we're right back in it So what this is, is the area where they were doing the test rides. Back on the floor. And so one of those uh, cargo bikes you wanted to ride, so... We made yeah. that happen. What you can't see is uh, me sort of 
you know, freaking out on the inside to make sure I don't wreck the thing. <laughs> because <laughs> as soon as you get on, you feel like you're going to fall over. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you get used to it after a few minutes. But yeah, some of those people are speed demons out there. And I'm just trying to not like destroy it, you know, $10,000 or whatever <laughs> piece of equipment. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, a Maxon Melion, I'm not sure if I get, I'm getting the, the pronunciation of that uh, uh, properly. Did you ever hear hear it actually pronounced? Uh, I think they just said like Maxon Melion. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Okay, cool. And uh, yeah, that it's it, so describe describe the what this was like in terms of uh, the the specs in terms of you know because this is a rather special uh, cargo bike. Yeah, well, those front two wheels both um, they tilt like when you right. when you turn, and that's freaky. If you're not used to that, <laughs> I can confirm. Also, the thing's pretty heavy, so uh, like there's a little bit of a learning curve getting on there, but seems like a pretty cool way to haul people around. Yeah. Yeah, good. I, I I was having a blast just filming you. <laughs> yeah. Did you leave out the part where I like ran over some cones? I think I did. Okay, good. And again, a huge thanks uh, heading out to Jos uh, Schleuschmans. Uh, uh, it really was a, a special uh, thing for us to be able to to be there, and uh, uh, we ended up, you know, connecting with Jos uh, in his hometown of Nijmegen. Um, uh, like the next week. And so uh, it gave him an opportunity to recover from bringing the Cargo Bike Festival back. Uh, it was back for real this this year. Uh, you know, the pandemic era sort of put a pause on it. But uh, again, thank you so much, Eos, for, uh, for encouraging me and encouraging all of us to uh, to show up. And, and we weren't the only ones there. I mean, uh, Dave Edwards was there and Ariane uh, Reed. His, uh, his partner was there, and then we ran into some other folks that we knew there, too. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it was. What was your, what was kind of your, you know, debrief or reflections that you had from the, the festival? Well, obviously, like, it seems that there's a lot of companies out there that see a lot of potential in electrifying you know, something smaller than a truck, you know, a delivery truck or delivery van or even, or even cars. Right. And that was pretty cool. We saw, you know, things that were sort of on the verge of being something you could call a bike, like a cargo bike. Um, and you know, it's a different industry than I'm, I'm not in the delivery industry, but I'm, I just thought it was kind of inspiring to see the number of different ways that a, a lot of these companies were tackling the kind of delivery with a smaller footprint um type of problem so that that was pretty cool i don't know exactly what i was expecting from that but um that's encouraging and you'd love to see you know some of our infrastructure start to reflect you know those types of uh you know vehicle choices but what, what about you john yeah i mean i was really impressed by the sheer variety of <laughs> machinery yeah. that we saw there it was just phenomenal i mean yeah we saw the 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 boat bike bike boat whatever you want to call that one but uh yeah i mean the contraptions the 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 innovation that is happening i feel like we're right there at that period of time because yeah. we've got this electric assist aspect to it uh we're really seeing some uh i think really game changing uh, designs and innovations happening at this point in time. So as, as we sort of alluded to, uh, we ended up doing this the, the first two days and then the next day, uh, what did you do? You, you had other plans. We were there for so many days. Uh, I think this is the day that I went to Rotterdam, yep. uh, to visit a friend and, you know, Rotterdam is a you know one city over a couple cities over from Delft maybe um, took the train out there and then on the way back it's like well it's a nice day I'm gonna ride back and it was only like a 35 minute ride and it's just I don't know it was wild to me that you can bike from one big city to another big city yeah easily 
right? And the time that it takes me to bike to work here within the same city. <laughs> yeah. And we ended up meeting up at a wonderful yes, brewery. And uh, I had pizza and you had, was it Thai or Indian? Indian. Indian. And uh, and that was a recommendation of your friend, correct? That brewery. Yeah. Shout out to Floor. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and what was that ride like getting from, from Rotterdam to Delft? Yeah, I left from cent- the central station there, and um, first is a pretty straight shot. You leave, you leave from there. You're on dedicated infrastructure the whole time from the center city, and before you know it, you're like in the countryside because you know the the divide's pretty stark between uh, city and countryside there. And uh, then from that from there on, you're along a canal, and you've got you know some sort of industrial stuff that congregates along the canal and on the other side of the canal it's agriculture i mean it it was beautiful like it was a extremely comfortable ride and one that i would like happily have as a commute you know yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it's I, I i'm just amazed and that next day um the 29th is or no that was the 29th that was the rotterdam day for you and and the delft day for me that next day the 30th we decided to uh ride from delft over to the hague and so that's our next profile video that's our next uh, ride along video uh that we'll be serving up for folks is uh the fact that we did shoot a little bit more video on that and uh, we look forward to uh, treating folks to that ride yeah i can't wait very good. Well, hey, Jordan, thank you so much for doing this. I, I really do appreciate it. And uh, and folks, hopefully you enjoyed it as well. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. <laughs> thank you so Absolutely. much. And until next time. All right. Thanks again, John. Hey, everyone, just popping back in here to say thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're enjoying these uh, profile videos uh, and and the reaction uh, videos. Uh, I promise the next ones that we'll have will have a lot more moving content and uh, some writer point of view uh, in there as well. And also just wanted to say thank you so much to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, uh, Buy Me A Coffee, the YouTube Super Thanks, as well as buying things from, like, Streets of for people swag out on the Active Town store. I really do appreciate it. Every little bit adds up, and I really could not do this without you. Thank you so much. Well, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. Cheers.